Imagine a peaceful town shocked by a horrifying discovery. A house engulfed in flames in the quiet town of Dundas, Ontario. The tranquility of the early July night in 2018 was shattered as the Rutherfords' home, a beacon of warmth and love, became a blistering inferno. The fire took hold with a ferocity that was chilling, turning the once welcoming abode into a fiery hell in mere moments. The scene was ghastly. A spectacle of devastation that sent ripples of dread through the community. First responders raced against time, their sirens piercing the stillness of the night as they battled the blaze. Despite their valiant efforts, the fire raged on, consuming everything in its path. The once cheerful home of Alan and Carla Rutherford, beloved grandparents, parents and friends, was reduced to a smouldering ruin. As the morning light broke, the full extent of the tragedy began to unfold. Amidst the charred remnants of the Rutherfords' home, two bodies were found. The dreadful discovery sent a shockwave through the town, a grim reminder that this was no ordinary fire. This was a scene of loss, a picture of a life abruptly ended. But as the smoke cleared, something else became eerily apparent. The intensity of the blaze, the rapidity with which it consumed the house, it all pointed to a chilling conclusion. This was no accident. The fire had been deliberately set. A sinister act of arson that had claimed two innocent lives. And so, in the ashes of what was once a warm, happy home, investigators were confronted with a daunting task. They had to sift through the debris, piece together the fragments of a shattered life, and seek justice for Alan and Carla Rutherford. In the ashes of what was once a home, investigators found more than just remnants of a life lived. They found a mystery that was begging to be unravelled. Who were the Rutherfords, you may ask? Loving parents, beloved grandparents, and cherished friends. Once upon a time in the quiet town of Dundas, Ontario, there resided an elderly couple known as the Rutherfords. Alan and Carla Rutherford were the epitome of kindness and love. They were pillars of the community, always ready to lend a helping hand, and their home was a beacon of warmth and hospitality. Alan, a retired engineer, was known for his intelligence and wit. Even in the twilight of his years, his mind was as sharp as ever. He had a knack for fixing things, from a broken clock to a child's toy. Always a problem solver, Alan was the go-to guy when something needed repairing, his hands creating magic out of mayhem. Carla, on the other hand, was the heart of the home. A retired school teacher, she had a way with words and a love for literature. She was a storyteller, her tales filled with wisdom and laughter. She was the glue that held the family together, her love and care radiating in every corner of their house. Together, they were the perfect pair, their love story spanning more than five decades. Their home was a sanctuary for their children and grandchildren, filled with laughter, love and memories. They were the kind of people who would invite you in for a cup of tea, listen to your stories and make you feel like you were part of the family. The news of their tragic demise in a house fire sent shockwaves through the community. Their sudden departure left a void in the hearts of those who knew them. It was incomprehensible to think that someone could have wished harm upon such kind and loving souls. Their house, once a symbol of warmth and hospitality, was now a charred reminder of a dreadful night that claimed the lives of Dundas's beloved couple. The intensity of the blaze was a grim testament to the malicious intent behind it, leaving investigators with little doubt that this was no accident. The question that haunted everyone was, who could possibly have wished harm on the Rutherfords? As the embers cooled, a meticulous investigation started, an investigation that would soon reveal this was no accident. The once vibrant residence of the Rutherfords was now a charred skeleton a haunting echo of the life that once thrived within its walls. Amidst the rubble and ash, investigators began their challenging task, sifting through the remnants of a life abruptly ended. The initial observations were unsettling. The intensity of the blaze, the speed at which it had consumed the house, all hinted at a sinister origin. This was no ordinary house fire. The evidence painted a chilling picture of a fire intentionally ignited, a blaze designed to obliterate everything and everyone within its path. 
The investigators' suspicions were soon confirmed. The fire patterns, the burn trails, the presence of accelerants, every piece of evidence uncovered pointed towards a calculated act of arson. Someone had intended to turn the Rutherford's haven into their inferno, but who, and more importantly, why? The answer to those questions lay in the heart-wrenching, dying declarations of Alan Rutherford. As death drew near, Alan found the strength to utter a few crucial words, words that would serve as the first and most pivotal lead in this grim investigation. This wasn't a nameless, faceless perpetrator. This was someone Alan knew, someone he had trusted. In his final moments, Alan pointed the finger directly at the one who had lit a match in his bedroom. The identity of this person, however, was a revelation that would send shockwaves through the quiet town of Dundas, casting a dark shadow over a community that had believed itself safe. The fire had not been an accident. The lives of Alan and Carla Rutherford had not been claimed by chance, but by a deliberate and merciless act of violence. As the reality of the situation began to sink in, the investigators steeled themselves for the task ahead. They were not just dealing with an arson case, they were on the trail of a murderer. In his final moments, Alan pointed the finger directly at the one who had lit a match in his bedroom. With a lead in hand, detectives were set on a path, a path that led to a prime suspect. The prime suspect, an individual who was no stranger to the Rutherfords. This person wasn't a random burglar or a faceless menace lurking in the shadows. No, the suspect was someone familiar, someone who had shared laughs, meals and memories with the victims. The suspect's relationship with the Rutherfords was one that was supposed to be built on trust, a trust that was shattered on that fateful night in July. The motive? It was not immediately clear. The Rutherfords were loved by many, they had no known enemies. So what could have driven someone so close to them to commit such an unthinkable act? Was it a simmering resentment, a secret grudge, or perhaps something even more sinister? The answer to these questions was as elusive as the embers that still smouldered in the ruins of the house. The evidence, however, was compelling. The dying declarations of Al Rutherford had pointed the finger directly at the suspect. The forensics, too, were revealing. The fire had started in the bedroom, just as Al had said. The flames had spread with an intensity that suggested an accelerant was used, a fact that further implicated the suspect. Yet the suspect maintained innocence, claiming to have been elsewhere when the fire broke out. But the detectives were skeptical. Alibi or not, the evidence was mounting, and it was hard to ignore the glaring inconsistencies in their story. The suspect was in the spotlight, but the investigation was far from over. The detectives knew that they had to dig deeper to peel back the layers of deception and uncover the truth. But was this the full picture? Or was there more to the story? The answer to this question would only come with time, patience, and relentless pursuit of justice. Until then, the prime suspect remained just that, a suspect. Every mystery has a resolution, and this one was no different. It took a while, but the pieces of the puzzle finally fell into place. The investigators had their man, the prime suspect, the individual whom Al had pointed his dying finger at, was brought to justice. The evidence was irrefutable, the motive was there, and the community of Dundas, Ontario could finally breathe a sigh of relief. The investigators worked tirelessly, sifting through the remnants of the Rutherfords' home, piecing together the events of that fateful night in early July 2018. The blaze that consumed the Rutherfords' home was no accident, but a premeditated act of violence. The fire, the investigators concluded, had been started deliberately, and the evidence all pointed to one person. The conclusion of the investigation brought a sense of closure to the community, but it also left a lingering sorrow. The Rutherfords were pillars of their community, beloved by many. Their sudden and tragic departure left a void that could never be filled. The community came together to mourn their loss and to celebrate their lives. They were remembered for their kindness and their love for their family and friends. The Rutherford story is a testament to the resilience of the human spirit. Despite the tragedy, their legacy lives on in the hearts and minds of those who knew them. They were loving parents, caring grandparents and loyal friends. 
Their memory is a beacon of light in the darkness, a symbol of love and kindness in a world that can sometimes seem cruel and unforgiving. This case also serves as a stark reminder of the darkness that can lurk behind the most ordinary of facades. It's a chilling testament to the fact that sometimes the greatest mysteries are not found in the pages of a novel or on the silver screen, but in the heart of a small town, behind the closed doors of a seemingly ordinary home. The Rutherford story is a chilling reminder that sometimes the greatest mysteries are hidden behind the most ordinary of facades.